Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Rutgers University recently got a $45 million grant from the National Institutes for Health. So how are they going to spend the money? Here to talk about that is Reynold Penitary, Vice Chancellor for Translational Medicine and Director of the Institute for Translation Medical at Rutgers. Man, that's a mouthful. Thank you so much for coming in. What is transitional medicine? So, Larry, translational medicine. Translational, sorry. Translational medicine me. is an approach that takes discoveries, maybe in a petri dish in a laboratory bench, and converts that into new therapies, new approaches, new devices that impacts not only patients, but whole communities in promoting health. And that's where the entire 45 million is going? Well, the 45 million is going to be dispersed over 14 cores. Each core has a very specific goal. For example, community engagement. This is to engage communities in putting forward questions for scientists to answer. What do they value? Some of this could be healthcare delivery. Uh, some of this is to improve diabetes therapy. That's just one core. Another core, Larry, is informatics, mining our electronic medical records in hospitals and physicians' offices to find patients that qualify for clinical trials so that they could have access to the latest, greatest therapies that's going to improve care. That's only two of the 14 cores. Uh, there's sometimes, education. I think you up, sometimes I think the medical people and the academics come up with words just so we don't get them. <laughs> what, what, what are uh, informatics? How does it help me? If I, yeah. Let's say I go into a doctor's office. How does, it, how does an informatic system help me? So in, think of informatics as all the information that's in your electronic health record. The physician, as you're seeing them, is inputting information. That information is very pertinent to you but also to the disease processes and to the therapies you're receiving. Now that can form a platform so that we can do further clinical research, identifying you as a particular participant or a specific participant in a study. So being able to automate that, to automate that across all of New Jersey, puts New Jersey in the forefront of being able to find participants for clinical research and to push these discoveries forward so they become real medicines utilized by all New Jerseyans. You, know, you mentioned clinical studies, and I know uh, I was reading about the grant. That is at the forefront, isn't it? You want to get more people into these clinical studies. Yeah. I mean, being a participant in a clinical trial is one of the most important things you could do. Not only does it help you get access to the most novel medicines, but you're also helping others with the same disease. And one of the greatest challenges for clinical investigators, people who do the studies, is finding patients that qualify. We have approaches in New Jersey that allows us to identify the right patient for the right drug, to get into the right trial, to really serve as demonstration that this will become a new therapy. One of the important things you said is that you want to do this for all of New Jersey. So when somebody goes to a doctor's office, you make this automatically available to them? That's our goal. Our goal is to decrease the threshold, to decrease the barriers of getting not only the doc, who might be a community doc, he's not a researcher, but to allow him and his and his patients to participate in these studies, lowering the threshold, making it advantageous, and providing not only the participant, but the provider the ability to get into the study seamlessly. I might have veered off course a little bit because you started off by talking about the money is going to go to 14 cores. And I think I went off on one, the informatics. What are, what are the cores? What are the 14 cores? Well, there's, a, there's another core that's based on workforce development and translational medicine. Well, what is that? We're talking about training not only new clinical coordinators, but we're talking about training people in policy that will allow access to new medications easily. So that's one core. Two cores are completely, completely focused on educating the next generation of translational science so that we form a legacy. New Jersey has lagged way behind other states in being able to leverage clinical trials. This puts us at the premier club, so to speak, of the other 48 hubs 
in this consortium across the country. This is a game changer for New Jersey. No, it sounds great because we've had so many people in here from either scientists from pharmaceutical companies or researchers that come in and talk about these clinical trials and how they have, one of the reasons they're here is because they're having a difficult time finding people. And they want to put the word out so that they can get somebody that is, a family member has Alzheimer's or a family member has autism so they can find out if they are um, able to take the, uh, qualify for this trial. So this is, this what you're talking about is critically important because obviously there is some type of lapse. Obviously there's a void and you wouldn't think there would be one. No, and you know, Larry, we as in New Jersey hadn't had our act together. So people were looking to Manhattan or Philadelphia for these kinds of trials. Now it's in your, in, your, in, in your backyard. We have the ability to do it here just as well as Manhattan schools or universities or those in Philadelphia. How did they choose you? Well, we came up with provocative ideas. We have a legacy of training great clinical researchers. This grant is partnered with NJIT in Newark as well as Princeton. So the three of us together really form a consortium, NJX, the New Jersey Alliance for Clinical and Translational Science that really truly goes across the entire state. We in New Jersey is the, are the, one of the most diverse and densely populated states. This gives us one leg up. We don't have to go miles and hundreds of miles for clinical trials. We have the ability here to really address diverse populations in great proximity. And the thing that's fascinating about the, the way you're describing it, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, yeah, the trials are, are important and the research is important, but the systems seem to be just as important. And it seems like in New Jersey, what you're saying is the systems were broken or non-existent. Is that fair? You're right, you're right. Think about a telegraph where you had one node here and one node here, but no wires. <laughs> this grant effectively builds the wires to these nodes that allows it now to seamlessly work across the state. This is, might seem like an odd question because $45 million is a lot of money. You talk about 14 cores and it's going to be five years, did you say? Five year grant. Is it enough? Well, <laughs> it's never enough, Larry, but what it is, <laughs> what it is, it's the platform that allows us to be at the table to really devise how do we sustain this initiative and how do we continue it further. And people will see this in their own lives. Oh, they'll see it absolutely in their own lives. As a matter of fact, uh, in the Barnabas system right now, the uh, Rutgers Health System, we're already seeing the impact of this grant. And certainly at Princeton, using artificial intelligence and machine learning, we're incorporating some of those novel thought processes in understanding mental health. Those studies are ongoing right now. Yes, you will see the benefits in your well, life. Wonderful. Congratulations, sir. Thank and you Nice so to much. meet you. Thanks for what you do. Reynold Penitary, Vice Chancellor for Translational Medicine and Director of the Institute for Translation Medical at Rutgers. When Jersey Matters continues, sometimes families don't know where to turn when they get the diagnosis of autism for a child. We have a suggestion when we come right back.